Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at adding Sword Bay into a Rails 7 project. This is a topic I've had people ask me about previously, quite a few times actually. Uh, the issue is I've never really managed to get it to work. I think this time I have a solution that kind of works out of the box, uh, but we'll have to take a look. First thing I want to mention is with RVM list, we can see that I am currently using Ruby 3.1.3 instead of my default choice of 3.2 because it seems like there's a bug with 3.2 currently where I think it's called Parlor. One of the dependencies for Sorbet is causing a, uh, a bug that it causes it to uh, just constantly throw errors when you're trying to add, I forget what it is, one of, one of the, the commands you need to run. So that's why I've gone back to 3.1.3. This seems to work for me out of the box. Uh, it does just require a little bit of finagling. So to get started, we're going to go over to the Sorbet docs. You can check out what, you know, what Sorbet is over here. It's basically just a type checker. Think like TypeScript or whatever. Uh, and we can change, you know, Ruby somewhat into a statically typed language. Some people like this. Uh, for me, I don't really care, but we can take a look at it. So we're going to do a Rails new video command. We'll CD into that video project and run a code dot to open that up in VS Code. And then we can go ahead and add these gem dependencies. We'll run one command and then we can probably go take a nap because let me tell you, this command for me at least has been taking probably 15 to 20 minutes when I run it sometimes. So it's, it's not great. We'll come over here. We'll go into our gem file and we'll paste in these three dependencies right here. Save this, come over here and run a bundle command to install these. Now, after that's installed, there's a couple commands we can run, but because it suggests using tapioca, we're just going to go ahead and use the tapioca setup for this. So here you can see they recommend running bundle exec tapioca init. So we'll go ahead and run that. And that will start the rather lengthy process. At this point, I would suggest finding something to do because this will probably be here for a while. As for me, uh, I will see you when this is done in about five to 10 minutes. All right, now that that's done, we can go ahead and move on with our lives. Again, I don't know why that one takes so long. I guess it has a lot to do. But the next thing that I want to do here, uh, I don't really know if it's mentioned here, but I do have another blog post that I'd like to reference it is this one over here. Uh, so in this blog post, which I also have a link to in the video description, uh, you can see that the command that you also want to run is the bin slash tapioca DSL. So we'll go ahead and we'll run that command as well. And we can just go ahead and copy that and paste it in here, or I guess not, uh, bin slash tapioca DSL to run that command. That should go ahead and do some more setup for us. It'll also set up some of the stuff for the turbo streams that we need, which was a known issue, but seems to no longer be a known issue. At this point, we should hopefully uh, be able to run a uh, scaffold. So we'll just go ahead, we'll run a Rails G scaffold for a post with a title and a body of type text. We can go ahead and run that. I'm gonna come over here to our side panel, go into our app, our models, and our post.rb. So this on the surface doesn't seem to have done anything. If we come over to the side here though, we can see we do have a sorbet directory with a config file, a tapioca directory with a config file, and a require section where you can add extra requires if you want as well as a RBI directory that has our annotations in it. It has our DSL in it, which is a whole bunch of stuff. And it has the gems that we're also covering here, which is gonna, again, depend on what you're using. Uh, but for our case, what we wanna do is just take a look at how we can add some basic type checking to something like our model or our controller. In terms of our model, it's pretty simple. We're just gonna come in here, we're gonna come up to the top and put a comment in that says typed colon space true. It's a magic string that we can put at the top here as a comment that will then tell it that this is a typed file. Now to test this, uh, we can do whatever we would like. Uh, we can come down here and we can say, I don't know, def uh, title and body, something like that. Come in here and then we can say this is going to return the, uh, the title and the body. So you can say title plus body, something like that. Now, if we hover over these, you'll see that the method doesn't exist in the post because this needs to be a self.title and a self.body. And if we hover over those self.titles, we'll see that it still says that. So what's the issue here? Well, the issue is we have 
uh, the Sorbet extension installed in my Visual Studio Code. So what you want to do is come over to the extensions and search for Sorbet. And then you can go ahead and click on the Ruby Sorbet, click install. After you do that, you'll see down here somewhere that it says it does require uh, Watchman. So we do need to install that as well. To do that, we can go ahead and, and uh, come to our terminal, run a sudo apt install, and we want to install Watchman. You can go ahead and run that, type in your password if you have one, and then you should be good to go there. You might need to restart Visual Studio Code at this point, and then hopefully it will start throwing errors for you if you run into issues like this. So we have the typed true, and we've generated this. What's the, what is the issue? Well, as you can see here, our order of operations was we generated the uh, DSLs up here somewhere. I'm not going to scroll all the way up. Then we generated our scaffold. And then after we generated our scaffold, we just installed Watchman. What we should do is now that we've generated the scaffold, we should run a Rails db colon migrate command. This is important. Make sure you migrate and then run the bin slash tapioca DSL command again. And you'll see that this will generate some more stuff for you. So what does this do? It generates the DSL for the post.rbi. This is located inside of Sorbet, inside of our RBI, our DSL, and then inside of a post.rbi. And here's where it's gonna set up everything for this model. And now what we can see here is we have the self.title, that's working just fine, but the plus does not exist uh, because it could be a nullable string. Now what's a nullable string mean? It means that you could have a situation where maybe your title, I'm just gonna do this in comments, your title is nil, hypothetically, and your body is, you know, like test. What you're trying to do here is nil plus test, and that doesn't make a lot of sense. So it's upset here because this title could potentially be nil. So one of the things you can do here is just say a capital T dot M-U-S-T and wrap this around the title, which will say this must exist. And now we can do something very similar here where we say this also shouldn't be nil. And that will fix that error specifically. Now there's other ways to do this, of course. We could come up here and we could just say, you know, let's do something like uh, our title and our body. We could return that and that works just fine without those similar issues. I'm actually gonna leave this in here just as a example. So we'll leave this as a nil check and then we'll just do the uh, quotes in here for the title and the body. So we'll say this is a nil, a nil uh, uh, guarantee, something like that. I don't know. And we'll just paste that in. Uh, and then what we can do next is uh, we can say, all right, so this, this works, but now we have type checking. How do we verify that this will return what we expect? For that we want to do a SIG, which I guess stands for like a method signature maybe is what they're going for. Uh, and then we just say this returns something. And this is in this case going to return a string. So we can do this, but you'll see we're getting an error. So the error here for the returns says it doesn't exist on the type of uh, class post. So why is that? Well, the SIG also doesn't exist here. And why is that? Well, if we click on quick fix by hovering over the little uh, light bulb, or if you've used VS Code before, uh, you can hit control and period or the uh, one of the angle brackets, depending on which keyboard you have, I guess. Uh, well, but most likely the, the greater than symbol. You can then click on the add extend T sig. That'll automatically do your extension up here and now this will work. So if we were to change this, I think the example in the blog post was something like brackets. This will now uh, be returning an array, but it's expecting a type string because we told it a string up here. So instead it's now getting a string array. So an array full of, of a string, uh, which doesn't work. Now there is a option to view the problem. Uh, but it's not really sure how to fix it. Sometimes you might get an issue where you can fix it, in which case you can run SRB, I think TC to type check, and then you can run dash A to type check and fix things if you're running into a sorbet issue specifically. Uh, in this case, what we can do instead is if we wanted this to be like an array, we could just do something like this and that would fix it just fine. That's not what I'm going for though. So I'm gonna leave this as type string just to show you how this works. So this is how you can guarantee the signature uh, works how you would expect it to. And if we come over to the Sorbet website real quick, we should hopefully be able to see uh, some of these some of these things somewhere in here, uh, depending on what we're looking for. So right here it says, here's your extension, and here's how you can do your your signature uh, to uh, guarantee that you have these these uh, return types being checked, right? 
So that's one thing you can do. Um, the other thing we can do is come into our controller, for example, come up here to controllers, post controller, and then inside of our post controller, we can do something similar. So again, we're going to have to do our extension, but we can, we can just mess around in here real quick. Uh, so what we can do is we can come down to, let's say our get for our post here, and we can do a sig, open up these, these braces. And we can say this is going to return something because we know it's going to return something. It's actually going to return a at post, uh, which is equal to a post dot, dot new. So how do we do that? Well, here it's suggesting a t dot nillable post, but instead what we can do is we can say this is a sig and returns just a post, right? Because it, it's just creating a new post, but we're still getting this error because again, if we hit control and period, uh, it should hopefully work. Maybe, uh, let's see. Okay. It doesn't want to do it. So we'll just come up to the top. And we'll just say this needs to extend t colon colon sig just like that and now we can come down here and we can see we can see here it says this file must declare an explicit uh hash typed so we have to do that again so we come over here we can just copy this type to true we can paste this at the top here and now we can see that all of our errors have gone away and if you want to you can even come in here and change this to a uh what was it a uh post or t dot must for the post i guess Something like that uh, it doesn't look like it's happy with that. So maybe I have to make sure this is working, right? Give us both of the parentheses. Uh, yeah, so it's not happy with that. So it's gotta be the T dot nillable, I guess, uh, in this case. So we can even check here if we hover over this because we have that extension, it'll tell us all about this. Uh, and it's just, uh, I guess it's just a thing that says it could be nil, right? It may include the nil value. Uh, but yeah, so this is sort of just what I wanted to cover, just getting it up and working, I guess. We can come over here and make sure it's working by run, running like a Rails S, coming over to localhost port 3000 slash post. We can create a test in a case, and you can see that's working. You can see how to use the signatures to verify that it's working. Uh, for everything else, I would really suggest just looking at the documentation because I don't know what everyone wants here. Uh, you can do your runtime checks. Uh, you can, uh, you know, sort of step through here and see what you're looking for. I think the main things you're going to want are probably the extension, right? Uh, and then just the ability to verify your return types uh, and then maybe, uh, you know, add in your, your arguments here, which is going to be done with your params. So I guess we can take a look at that. Uh, let's just create a quick method here. It will say, uh, def, um, uh, takes arg. This will take in a, uh, uh, a new title, right? And then we'll say the uh, self.title equals new title. Again, no real point in doing this, but what we can do in here is we can say sig, and we'll say this needs to uh, returns a string, because we already know it's gonna return a string. Uh, and then we can also say, all right, it returns a string, but it has an argument. We don't have an argument defined here. Uh, so you can see here, malform sig could not, uh, type not specified for argument, right? So how do we fix this? It doesn't really tell us. Well, we can see over here in the docs, it's pretty easy. All we have to do is say params, this is the, uh, the new title colon of type string dot returns a type string. So we have our params and then our returns, something like that. Pretty straightforward. It's just, you know, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to, and you're going to have to go through and manually set up some of your files, unless there's ways to customize your generators. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, I just wanted to cover this real quick. I've had people asking for this for a while, and this is the first time I've actually managed to get everything up and running relatively easily. Uh, even if it does give you like a 10 minute break to go play RuneScape in between uh, setup commands. But yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this is helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next video.